obvious question of the day today is, should women be allowed to vote anymore? Should we just revoke our right to vote? And I'm asking this question seriously, and I want serious answers here. You dumb bitch. You know, I chalked this up to you being your usual shock jock self. But it wasn't until I literally looked at the comments of that YouTube video and saw men cheering you on and women agreeing with you that I lost my shit. So naturally, when they go low, I go lower. And I'm going in. Every evil villain has an origin story. And Candace Owens here is no different. And I get into all that and more. But let's talk a little about this. So Candace Owens defending the idea that women shouldn't have the right to vote because we have empathy and we're emotional creatures and we only support liberal agendas because we're nice. After all, the greatest civilizations that everyone wants to live in are the ones that lack empathy and compassion for mankind. Well, Candy, I'm here to prove your theory wrong because in this video, I will show you neither empathy or compassion because you don't deserve it. Candace Owens is prime example of how fascism is rooted and begins with failure. Fascists of the past, for example, the most notorious of all, Hitler, failed his art exam at the Vienna Academy for Fine Arts. And historians believe it to be the catalyst of his rise to far-right extremism and his hatred for the Jewish community. Candace Owens' failed attempts at becoming a liberal blogger, having started one of her own called Degree 180. The irony, right? That was back in 2015 when she and a bunch of other contributing writers would, you know, talk shit about Trump, even mocking the size of his penis, and discussing the crazy antics of the Republican Party. And it literally went nowhere, because it sucked. So when that failed in 2016, she started a new venture, a website called Social Autopsy. Now, what was Social Autopsy? Ironically, it was a site meant to expose cyber bullies, to which Owen said at an interview that the idea behind it was to go back to the golden rule of, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, and to hold people accountable to that rule. <laughs> I know! It was a searchable database where people can look up the names of their family, their friends, their co-workers, and see their online activity in a way to like combat and expose cyberbullying. Basically a whole site dedicated to canceling people, a concept that Candace Owens now mocks today. In 2017, money stopped coming in from the Kickstarter campaign she had started for it. The site never went public and it went kaput much like her conscience and soul. So what was a liberal girl who wanted to enter the liberal media space, but couldn't hack it and wanted to be a journalist, but never finished her degree in it to do? Well, that was in her own words, to become a conservative overnight, having blamed the failure of her site Social Autopsy on liberals. <laughs> <sighs> You see, even though conservatives are notoriously known for being racist, misogynistic, homophobic, and transphobic, they will gladly accept anyone from those groups who spew their hatred. Why is that? Their beliefs are confirmed from the very mouths of the people that they're trying to silence and oppress. And that gives them what I've coined bigot boners. And since conservatives from those marginalized groups are few and far in between, Candace Owens became a commodity and her rise to fascism, I mean fame, started there. Now, it didn't help that less than a year into Candace Owens identifying as a conservative that she met her now husband, George. He's an English lad born into extreme wealth and privilege from the UK and his family is uh, very big on conservative beliefs and values. No, no, not George Santos, George Farmer. We know him as the CEO of Parler, the conservative Twitter, the one Kanye tried buying a couple of years back. No wonder he and Candace became so chummy. Looks like the farmer used one of his tools to make the sale. Aho! Anywho, back to Georgie. Georgie went to Oxford University, and I'm sure it's because he was super smart and not because his daddy was a millionaire. 
His daddy did pay for him, though, an exclusive membership into the Boys Only Club of Oxford. The Bullingdon Club. Sounds fancy, right? Well, it is. It's basically the most elite and most expensive you can't sit with us club for little bratty white boys since the Breakfast Club. This club selects its members by grounds of wealth. And they have a pretty bad reputation of being obnoxious, wild, misogynistic, and you guessed it, racist as fuck. One of their most famous members is the ex-prime minister, UK's version of Donald Trump, Boris Johnson. And what's one of the initiations for their members, you ask? Going around to homeless people in the UK and burning $50 bills in front of them. Sounds like a bunch of stand-up gentlemen, right? So back to Georgie. During his tenure, one of their famous and fun little dinner party games to play was everybody went around the table and said their favorite racist joke, mostly about black people, and spouting off lists of things that they hate about minorities. I personally prefer scategories, but then again, I'm not a racist piece of shit. Now, George Farmer and his dad caught a lot of heat about him being a part of this club and his dad financing his membership there. His father's uber conservative Michael, aka Lord Farmer, a member of UK's House of Lords. That's the upper parliament of the United Kingdom. So yeah, despite this uh, club's racism and disgusting past, Candace hooks up with him. One article in the UK press claimed that this was a way just for the family to clean up their racist image. Yikes but I'm sure they're totally in love. She was 28 when they got married and one of the most famous pick me's was picked. I think it's safe to assume where Candace gets the racist and misogynistic material from for her show. Just by sitting at the dinner table with her in-laws and husband. Ah, to be a fly on the wall to listen to those conversations. So what initially started off as a gimmick to fame being a sellout for Candace, has turned into severe brainwashing and radicalization into far-right extremism for her. I mean, it's no coincidence that she keeps throwing out the word indoctrination every chance she gets. It's probably a cry for help. Blink twice, Candace. People often ask, what would the world have been like if Hitler had just gotten into art school? And while I'm not comparing Candace Owens to Hitler, She's become a mouthpiece for the side that is fighting to become the next one. And I can't help but to ask myself, what would Candace Owens' world be like if her shitty little blog would just have made it? But to quote her BFF Kanye, I guess we'll never know. Because Candace Owens is in a new bracket now. And that allows her to be a conservative. Because women like Candace especially ones that are married to wealthy, rich men, don't have to worry about voting because they'll always have access to the things that they vote against. Abortions, healthcare, opportunities. And what boggles my mind now is why Candace never went back to finish her degree, especially since one of the reasons she supposedly left was because of a student loan issue or financial aid issue. You have more than enough money to go back to school now. What's wrong? Are you afraid of being liberally indoctrinated or realizing that your thought process doesn't work in college? Because when you write papers on things, you have to support them with evidence and facts. And you'll never pass because you don't use them. You go based off of emotion. And that's why you're a conservative. And maybe conservatives are the ones that shouldn't have the right to vote. So suck on that. Anyways, bye!